Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanna to talk about perfume and specifically I wanna talk about my top 10 spring perfumes. I find that there are two types of women who like perfume. One type is they have one or two perfumes. They are their signature scents. They wear them all year long. They wear them every day and you almost associate that smell with them. It is just their signature. It's who they are. It says something about them. And then you have the other type of woman. And I am that type of woman in that I have lots of different perfumes. I tend to switch them up daily and I definitely switch them up seasonally. There are certain notes of perfume that I gravitate towards in the spring, for example, that I wouldn't use in the winter or I wouldn't use in the fall and vice versa. Now this is quite ironic that I'm this type of woman because until I got into my 40s, I didn't wear perfume. Well, to be fair, I had one perfume. I think it was given to me as a gift by my husband for an anniversary, I think our first anniversary. And it sat on my dresser. It was basically a piece of furniture. It was like a lamp. <laughs> I wore it maybe twice a year. I just, you know, I just wasn't that into it. And as I got into my 30s, my identity changed. I was kind of mom and I was mom to young little ones. So I smelled like smeared lollipop or milk or, you know, I was being used as a human napkin half the time. And so I just didn't really focus on anything like that. But it wasn't until I got into my early 40s that I decided, you know what, I want to work on finding my identity again. I'm still mom, but at the same time, I wanted to be me again, and I wanted to have an identity away from just being mom. And so I decided not to be intimidated by perfume anymore. I was very intimidated, and I think part of it is because most kind of mainstream perfumes, you know, most popular perfumes, give me instant headaches. There are definitely certain perfumes and certain perfume notes that I just can't wear. And I think I decided, well, I get these headaches and so I can't wear perfume. And when I decided in my early 40s to kind of challenge that, I said, you know what, I'm gonna go see if I can find one perfume, one perfume that works for me. And that's all she wrote. <laughs> what I learned was not only could I find one perfume, I could find lots of perfumes that worked for me. There are so many different perfume notes and categories. And the reality is I found out that, you know, as long as I stayed away from certain notes, I was absolutely fine. And now I'm obsessed with perfume. I love trying different perfumes. And so it's definitely become a little bit an obsession of mine. I have many different perfumes and I like to switch them up, like I said, for different times of year. What is interesting is that when I pulled out the 10 perfumes that I tend to wear in spring, when I pull them out for this video, I realized that they do share a lot of common perfume notes and I could actually group them in categories based on notes for the most part. And I didn't do that intentionally. I didn't look up a perfume note and say, oh, I like that note. I'm gonna go and try all the perfumes with that note. It happened organically, it happened kind of subconsciously. So to make this video a little bit more cohesive, I thought I would break them down by these different notes. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around and let's have a little fun. So the first perfume note I wanna talk about is Nectarine. Nectarine is a beautiful perfume note. It is fruity, it's got a little freshness to it, almost a little citrus to it, but it's not citrus. You know, citrus has that very sour, crisp, sharp, almost bitter, fresh aspect to it, whether you're talking about orange or lemon or bergamot. Nectarine isn't like that. It's a tiny bit fresh, it's a tiny bit citrusy, but it's got a little bit more sweetness. You know, it's a little bit more fruity in that. And I found that I really, really love this perfume note. The first perfume, my first nectarine perfume I wanna talk about is from Jimmy Choo. This is their Jimmy Choo Floral. This came out, I believe, in spring of 2019. Now, if you know the original Jimmy Choo, the Eau de Parfum, that is not this. <laughs> Jimmy Choo Eau de, Eau de Parfum, the original, is a pear toffee patchouli perfume. Don't get me wrong, it is a beautiful perfume. It's actually one of the few gourmands that I, perfumes that I can wear. Gourmand means like baked goods. When you wear Jimmy Choo, the original, it's like poached pear with caramel sauce 
or a sticky toffee pudding with poached pear on top. Like that's what Jimmy Choo is. This flanker, they refer to it as a flanker. It doesn't, I don't, I, I don't even know why they call it Jimmy Choo, frankly. <laughs> I think it's name recognition. I think from a brand perspective, when they launched these flankers, even though it doesn't smell at all like the original perfume, I think it's cheaper for them to do that than launching a brand new perfume, all the marketing and all that goes in. So you will find brands do this where they'll launch a flanker, they'll give it that name, but it doesn't smell anything like the original perfume. So the main notes in Jimmy Choo Floral are nectarine, tangerine, and bergamot on the top. The middle notes are magnolia, apricot blossom, and sweet pea blossom. And then the base notes are musk, ambroxan, and woody notes. Now, ambroxan is a very interesting perfume note. It doesn't actually smell like anything. Your own body chemistry makes it smell a certain way. So it's going to smell differently on everyone. It's a really, really interesting perfume note. But I get the nectarine in this. This is a beautiful, light spring perfume. It's delicate. It's feminine. Now, I mean, the longevity is not great. You're going to get four to five hours out of this perfume. It's an eau de toilette, which is less concentrated than an eau de parfum. It's going to be cheaper, obviously, because it is an eau de toilette. But it's just, it's so unoffensive. I can wear this to work. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel feminine and delicate, even though I'm not very delicate. But it makes me feel good. And it definitely makes me feel like spring. You know what? My next nectarine perfume is from Jo Malone. This is her Nectarine Blossom and Honey. This is a smaller version. This is a 30 ml. I lo also love this perfume. It is perfect for spring. It's You still get that nectarine, but the honey gives it a, a little bit of more sweetness. It kind of warms it up a little bit, but I wouldn't refer to this as like a really warm, kind of wintery perfume. This is definitely a delicate, feminine spring perfume. It is one of her best sellers from what I understand and I understand why. This is so unoffensive. It's going to have mass appeal. You know, there's going to be a lot of women who really like this fragrance. I like to wear it during the day, but I'll even spray it on my wrist at night. I'll even spray it on my pillow. That's how much I like it. You can see I'm, oh, I'm getting close to being out and I kind of hinted to my husband. I was like, oh no, <laughs> look, I'm almost out. <laughs> so I'm hoping maybe for Mother's Day, I'll uh, I'll get another one of these or maybe I'll even get the, the bigger size. The top notes on this perfume are green notes, black currant and pedigree. The middle notes are nectarine and black locust and the base notes are peach plum and vetiver. Now, the one gripe some people have with Jo Malone perfumes is that they're all colognes. And so again, if we look at that spectrum, you've got your Eau de Parfum, which is your most concentrated and therefore most expensive. You've got your Eau de Toilette, and then you have your cologne. So these are very light perfumes. They don't have great longevity. You know, they're gonna last, again, maybe four hours or so. So you do have to kind of reapply. But I think that's why I like them. I'm not trying to have a hard hitting perfume when I'm wearing a Jo Malone perfume. It's a very good daytime and very good work perfume. This is not a perfume that's going to enter before I do or anything like that. So, but I get it. That's kind of the gripe with Jo Malone because they are kind of pricey, especially for a cologne. The next perfume note that I want to talk about is a floral note, and that is Orange Blossom. I didn't realize until I started looking that I am very drawn to Orange Blossom perfumes in the spring. Orange Blossom has that hint of orange to it, but it's not a zesty, citrusy orange. It's not like slicing open an orange and putting it to your nose. Orange Blossom is delicate. It's more of a floral versus a citrus note. The first Orange Blossom perfume I want to talk about is a daytime perfume. And now again, I refer to things as daytime and nighttime. That's me personally. There are absolutely women out there who will wear what I consider a nighttime perfume all day. They'll wear it to work. They'll wear it to the gym. They don't care. I'm just one of those people who like more lighter perfumes during the day. And then I like a little bit heavier at night, but even then I'm generally not reaching for super heavy perfumes again, because I am sensitive and I kind of get headaches associated with perfume. So the first orange blossom perfume I want to talk about is from Gucci. This is Gucci bamboo. So a note about this perfume, there is no bamboo in this perfume. There's no bamboo note. It is referred to as Gucci bamboo because it represents a line of accessories that Gucci put out. This was launched in 2015. The main notes 
our top note is bergamot, your middle notes are Casablanca Lily, Orange Blossom, and Ylang Lang, and your base notes are Sandalwood, Tahitian Vanilla, and Amber. This is not a super vanilla-y perfume. I would not refer to this as a gourmand. This is referred to as a white floral. So you get mostly Orange Blossom from this. You can get a little citrus on the top with the bergamot, but it lasts maybe a minute. And then the, the heart is your Orange Blossom. This is just a beautiful white floral. Again, feminine, relatively delicate, inoffensive. You can wear this to work. It has a little bit more projection than like the Joe Malone does. I can walk into a room and someone who's a few feet from me may smell this versus having to be like right up in my business or to hug me or something to smell it. But it's still not crazy. It's not like someone in the next town is going to smell this perfume or anything. So the next Orange Blossom perfume I want to talk about is a nighttime perfume for me. This is from Ali Saab Le Parfum. I'm going to put a picture up on it because I can't find mine. So I'm going to put a picture on the screen for you. This is an Orange Blossom perfume. However, it is so different. It is a sophisticated, it is a chic, modern orange blossom. And the best way I can describe this perfume, because it has this like sparkling quality, it's almost like you have a glass of champagne and you stuck a little sprig of orange blossom in it. That's exactly what it smells like. It is sparkly, it kind of tickles your nose when you wear it. It is super, super elegant. Now, I don't wear this during the day because frankly, I just don't think I can get away with it. And what I mean by that is when I put this on during the day, I feel like a little girl wearing her mom's high heels. I just feel like the perfume wears me instead of me wearing the perfume. So I am definitely one of these people that when I'm going to wear this perfume, I'm going out. I'm getting dressed up. I am putting my hair up. I am whatever I'm doing. I'm going to a wedding. I'm going out with my husband. This is that perfume. And it is just so sophisticated. It just makes me feel like a grown-up without making me feel old or grandma-y. There is no grandma associated with this perfume at all. So if that sounds good to you, I highly suggest that you check this perfume out. The top notes here are orange blossom and African orange flower. The mid notes are jasmine and the base notes are white honey, patchouli, rose, and Virginia cedar. The next nighttime orange blossom perfume I wanna talk about is from Chanel. This is Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. This is one of the top selling, I think it's in the top 10 selling perfumes in the world. And there's a good reason for that. It is such a beautiful perfume. Now, a lot of women wear this during the day. It's a little strong for me to wear from a projection perspective. This definitely can reach out a good six feet or so but it is just beautiful. Now, what makes it different than the Ellie Saab is the Ellie Saab is very, you know, it's kind of like that expensive champagne with a little floral added. It's very elegant, chic, sophisticated. Coco Mademoiselle is more romantic. It is beautiful and, and has that romantic appeal. The top notes here are bergamot, orange blossom, and grapefruit. The middle notes are rose, lychee, and jasmine, and the base notes are patchouli, vanilla, musk, and vetiver. Now, the other way I compare these two perfumes is popularity. If you go to a fancy restaurant and you are pretty adept at recognizing perfumes, you will smell Coco Mademoiselle. You will smell it. There is at least one woman in the room wearing it because it is so popular. Ellie Saab is very different. It is much more unique in that a lot of women don't wear it. You know, a lot of women don't even know about it. So if you, you know, some women are like, I want to wear something different. I want to wear, wear something that no one else in the room is wearing. If that is you, then I think Ellie Saab is a great perfume for that. If you are someone who's like, I don't care if there's 50 women in the room wearing it, it makes me feel good, I love it, then Coco Mademoiselle is a really, really good perfume to try. It's one of my favorite perfumes from Chanel. It has that very French perfume feel and it's just beautiful. The last orange blossom perfume I want to talk about is from Giorgio Armani. This was just launched, I believe, last fall. This is my way. I have a little travel size here. This is an orange blossom perfume. It also has that kind of sparkliness to it. So similar to Ellie Saab, but this is definitely more approachable. I would say this absolutely can be a daytime perfume. It doesn't have to just be a nighttime perfume. It's, 
you know, not crazy projection. The longevity is quite good. It's about six hours on me, but it's a, it's just a, a gorgeous perfume. When I think about this perfume, unlike Ellie Saab, which is like Don Perignon champagne sparkling, this is more like sparkling wine with the girlfriends, <laughs> you know, kind of rosé with the girlfriends. It definitely has a different vibe to it. It's much more, like I said, it's much more approachable. The top notes on this perfume are orange blossom and bergamot. The middle notes are tuberose, Indian jasmine, and the base notes are white musk, Madagascar vanilla and Virginian cedar. So this is very mainstream. I would say this is kind of a very modern way to do perfume in this day and age. And it's it's a really, really nice scent. I My guess is it's gonna do very, very well and just because it is does have that mass appeal. So the next perfume note I wanna talk about is another floral, another floral note, a light floral note. And this is Osmanthus flower. So Osmanthus flower is kind of hard to describe. It only blooms at night. It has this kind of creamy milkiness to it. That's the best way I can describe it. It's not crazy floral, it's not heavy, but it is. It's very creamy and milky. And the first Osmanthus flower perfume I wanna talk about is from Atelier. This is their Love Osmanthus. Atelier is known for their citrus perfumes. They do just an amazing job with their citrus perfumes, but this one's a little bit different. The top note here is, is lemon, the middle note is the osmanthus, and then the base note is cedar. And so what this perfume does is it kind of cuts that freshness. So lemon, I, I'm a big fan of lemon perfumes, but not in the spring. That's a note that I save for the summer because it can cut through that humidity. And it's very fresh, but it's also very sharp and sour. And that creamy milkiness of a, the Osmanthus really kind of shaves down those sharp edges and makes it much more mellow, more spring. So the way I would describe this is if you have ever eaten a lemon drop and after about five, 10 minutes when you've sucked all the sugar and all the sourness out of it, and now you're just left with that kind of sweeter lemon, that's what this perfume is. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful perfume. The second Oxmanthus flower perfume I wanna talk about is from Narciso Rodriguez. This is for her. This is the Eau de Toilette, which is a black bottle, has a light pink box. The Eau de Parfum has a light pink bottle in a black box. I understand that there's been many a man who has come home with the wrong perfume <laughs> when it comes to this brand and this specific perfume. So Narciso Rodriguez is his Osmanthus perfume. It is very different than the Atelier. This is a very powdery, very feminine perfume. I think of it as when you get out of the shower and that's what it smells like. It is, in my opinion, like the way a woman smells. I don't know if, I don't want it that taken the wrong way, but it's just, it's the way a woman smells or should smell. This is a very musky perfume, but it's got that little powdery note to it with that, and that, that creamy milkiness with the osmanthus. The top notes here are African orange flower, osmanthus, and bergamot. The middle notes are musk and amber, and the base notes are vetiver, vanilla, and patchouli. This has great longevity. This stays on me for a good eight hours, but the projection is not crazy. This is a very popular perfume for professionals. So doctors, lawyers, because it's not gonna offend anybody. It's not gonna be something that people are gonna pick up and be like, oh God, she's wearing perfume. It's definitely a very natural smell. So a lot of people just, you know, they just get some freshness from it. It's not something that is easily offensive but it is very sophisticated. I love this perfume. The other interesting note about the EDT, the Eau de Toilette, is Eau de Toilettes generally are less concentrated than Eau de Parfum, so they, they last a shorter period of time, which is why they're less expensive. But what I found interesting about this is if you put the Eau de Parfum on one wrist and you put this on the other wrist, the first two to five minutes, this is a tiny bit fresher on the top note, but after five minutes, you cannot tell the difference. You can absolutely not tell the difference between these perfumes. So this is probably the one perfume that I would say, buy the Eau de Toilette, it's cheaper, and you get just as much longevity than you do with the Eau de Parfum. 
So the next perfume note I want to talk about, I want to go back into the fruits and I want to talk about strawberry. I'm going to have two perfumes and they are completely different than to each other, but they both have strawberry as one of their main notes. So the first perfume I want to talk about is from YSL. This is Moncari. If you watched my Sephora wishlist video, you'll probably recognize that I talked about this. I used up my um, travel size and I'm waiting for my new one to come with my Sephora order. So I don't have it here to show you because I'm waiting for it to come. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous spring perfume. It's a little sweeter than some of the ones I've been talking about, but the top notes are fruits of the forest. So when I think of this perfume, I think about like a berry salad in front of me. If you actually read the text, the top notes are strawberry, raspberry, pear, orange, tangerine, bergamot, and cologne. The middle notes are peony, jasmine, sambac, Chinese jasmine, datura, and orange blossom. And the base notes are Indonesian, patchouli, white musk, vanilla, and broxen, moss, and cedar. <sighs> Lots of notes. But basically what you get from this perfume is fruits of the forest. <laughs> Raspberry, strawberry, blackberry. That's what you're getting. Um, and maybe a little patchouli on the base. This is a great long lasting perfume. It lasts a good eight hours on me. Like I said, it's a little sweeter, but it is a gorgeous, gorgeous perfume. I use it in the daytime, but a lot of women use it as at night as well. I really like the new version that just came out, the intense version. That is a black currant perfume, so it's a little richer, bolder, deeper on the top, but it is also a really nice perfume as well. I'm not going to a lot of places at night, so I decided to choose to buy the Eau de Parfum instead of the intense version, just because I'm not going out a lot. My second strawberry perfume is from Burberry. This is Burberry Her Eau de Parfum. So this is the original Burberry Her. This is a strawberry perfume. That's what I get from it. But if you read the text, it is the top notes are strawberry, raspberry, blackberry, sour cherry, blackcurrant, mandarin orange, and lemon. Your middle notes are violet, jasmine. Your base notes are musk, vanilla, oak moss, cashmerian, woody notes, amber, and patchouli. Again, lots of notes. <laughs> but what I get from this is strawberry all the way down. And what's interesting to me is I don't get the same strawberry that I get in Moncree. I get this very artificial synthetic strawberry that has this kind of plasticiness, almost makeupiness to it. And I first smelled it and for like three days, it like bowled me over. I was very nostalgic. It reminded me of something and I couldn't remember what it was. And I finally figured it out after a few days. If you're my in my age group, you may remember playing with strawberry shortcake dolls. Um, I had strawberry shortcake, I had all her friends, I even had the strawberry carrying case. <laughs> and that's what this smells like. This smells like smelling your strawberry shortcake doll when you were a kid. I explained that to my husband. I asked for this perfume for Christmas and he was like, well, what does it smell like? And I said, this is what it smells like. And he was like, oh, why would you want to smell like that? <laughs> and I said, well, that's not necessarily what other people smell on me, but that's what I smell. And that's the beauty of perfume. It's nostalgic. It brings us back to certain places, certain memories. And that's what I love about it. I think the other thing that this reminds me of is those scratch and sniff stickers. And again, if you're in my age group, we all had those sticker books when we were little. And this is a strawberry scratch and sniff sticker. That's what this smells like. The other thing that's really nice about this perfume, this has the most gorgeous sprayer. It's just amazing. I wish every perfume had this sprayer on it. It's so awesome. Another interesting note about Burberry Her. So there is a very expensive perfume on the market called Baccarat Rouge 540. And it was designed by the same perfumer, the same nose that designed Burberry Her. And apparently he was asked to design or create a basically a dupe, a more mainstream, more accessible version of Baccarat Rouge 540 because that is so expensive. And apparently this is what he came up with. And I have never tried Baccarat Rouge 540, but from what I understand, it is this is absolutely a dupe for it. So if you like Baccarat Rouge 540 and don't want to spend, you know, $350, $400 bottle, then, you know, Burberry Her may be a very good option for you. The last perfume note I want to talk about isn't really a note per se. It's a subcategory of perfume because there was one other perfume. And if you've been paying attention, I said top 10. 
I have 11 perfumes here. Apparently I cannot count, <laughs> but I didn't want to not include this perfume because it's one of my favorite spring perfumes. And this subcategory of perfumes is also one of my favorite. So this is green perfumes. Green perfumes are a subcategory of perfumes. They're not always one specific note, but they're notes that are supposed to remind you of the outside, not the beach per se, but the actual being out in nature. So fresh cut green grass, for example, walking around in a forest, for example, being in a mossy field, that type of thing. That's what these perfumes are supposed to invoke. And I love green perfumes. This is my favorite. This is from Chanel. This is the Chanel Chance All Fresh. Now Chanel Chance is its own perfume. And then there are three flankers. There is Chanel Chance Au Vive, which is the citrus version. There is Chanel Chance Eau Tendre, which is probably the most popular. It's a light floral. It is also a beautiful perfume. I love it, but unfortunately there's something about my body chemistry. It just cannibalizes it. It lasts like 30 minutes tops on me. Now I know I'm not the only woman with this problem because they recently launched a Eau de Parfum. These are all Eau de Toilettes, but they recently launched an Eau de Parfum of the Eau Tendre, I think because it's so popular and there's a lot of women who wish it would last longer. And I haven't tried that yet, but I'm thinking about it because I really love this perfume. It's so pretty. But the one that I feel was just made for me is this All Fresh. And you can see it even has that green liquid to it. A lot of green perfumes have that green liquid. So the top notes on this are lemon, cedar, and citron. The middle notes are water, hyacinth, pink pepper, and jasmine. And the base notes are patchouli, white musk, vetiver, teakwood, iris, and amber. And I don't know if it's the teakwood. I don't know if it's the cedar. You know, all of these are, can be considered these green notes that give you that, like I said, that evoke, that outside feeling. But this is just gorgeous. And what I think is so interesting with this perfume, I don't know what it is about my body chemistry, but it loves it. It is this perfect match in that I put this on. It's an eau de toilette. It's not supposed to last very long, but this lasts all day on me. I can even smell it on my clothes the next day. So there's something about my body chemistry that the marriage of this perfume and my body chemistry is just a match made in heaven. So I highly recommend checking it out. It's different. Again, so many women wear the Otandra. This Eau Fresh is a little bit different. Very spring. It's a perfect perfume for spring. So that's it guys. I hope you had a great time kind of walking through my favorite top 10, 11 perfumes. Have you tried any of these perfumes? Do you love them? Do you not like them? Did I miss some that you think uh, I should have included? I would love to hear your comments below. And if you like this content, I would love if you'd subscribe below as well. And I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye guys.